the uh, additional tail or, or limb joints on the pelvis was also the number one request in the write-in area on the bento survey. So, um, you know, I'm I'm okay with the idea of adding an additional uh, limb there that we could uh, we call a tail or we call something else. Um, uh, uh, Oz, if you want to animate things by rotations, you actually need the the joint to be some distance away from the thing it's trying to move, right? If you're if you're right on. I was thinking the the end point of the of the bone yeah. should be on the surface. Right, right. The, but it's, the it's thing you wrote where the start point of the bone back is. In... Um, if if you're only trying to do animations using translations, then it's uh, it's fine and probably easier to have your your uh, you know start points right on the surface of the face. Whereas if you're trying to do rotations, they need to be kind of below, so you've got a, a sort of a fulcrum to work from. Actually, I was thinking about this uh, the last two weeks. The bones being deeper in the face allows uh, for rotations and translations to be used in the same, same animation. While if you move the bones to the surface of the face, you're only left with just translations as far as animations. Um, right. right. So I, I think leaving them deep is, is the obviously more flexible thing to do. Right. As, as far as the, the um, um, it, that brings us up to the other topic, which we can get into later, of um, having the, the default avatars head rigged to the face bones as well. They can take advantage of the, uh, the face bones. But that's another topic that we can get to when Veer wants to get to. Okay, sure. We can, uh, we can chat about that a little later. Um... So I guess I was talking about the bone proposals. Uh, I'm I'm okay with adding a second, uh, a second thing that looks like the tail. Uh, I'm not I'm not so sure about the naming scheme. Uh, the proposal has a left tail and a right tail. Um, I would think about something more like a tail and an ox tail or something like that. Um, I think for somebody who just wants to have a tail on their on their creature, they're going to be a little confused by having to decide between left and right. Um, Although, uh, you know, of course, it doesn't make any difference in practice what you can do with it. It's just a naming convention. It also it also discourages portable animation creation, right? I mean, which one do you animate, the left tail or the right tail, if you want to create a, an animation just for tails? If you want to create yeah. a ta an animation for tails, you should animate the tail bones. Period. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to tell how much we're going to get uh, kind of reusable pools of, uh, of meshes or animations, but uh, it, it would be nice if our conventions uh, could contribute to that as much as, uh, as much as we can manage. Well, I think for, you know, for the more subtle stuff like faces, it, people have made pretty good arguments that a lot of, a lot of the usages will require idiosyncratic animations, but for something like a tail, uh, or even or even wings, you know, it, it's it's not difficult to imagine that you could make a, a an animation that would apply to most wings and would look reasonably good, right? And certainly that should be true of tails. Now, if you wanted to have a tail that looked very differently, right? If you wanted to have a tail that looked like well. Like your avatar with with an, an armored thing, it might, um, you know, something segmented. You'd want to weight it very differently, and animations might look a little, a little weird. But, um, yeah. Well, in right. our world, there are only two kinds of tails, really. There are the sort of uh, appendage tails or pencil tails, uh, the the ones that actually grab and are useful, and the ones that are just kind of balance and leftover tails. That's it, really. Right, right. And if we did add a second set of limbs, not a second tail, to the M pelvis bone like we talked about a couple weeks ago, somebody could use that second set of limbs that are parented to the M pelvis bone as either a single second tail or even two extra tails. I mean, they don't have to use it for 
uh, wait for a second set of legs or, or arms or anything. They could use them for tails. Sure. Uh, you know, the, how, how people choose to use it obviously is, is up to them. Um, you know, there was a lot of, there were a lot of requests for additional, uh, additional limbs, uh, you know, attached to the pelvis. Um, and, you know, we can, you've got to call, you know, if you've got a couple of them, you've got to call them something. Um, certainly, uh, Certainly, if you just want a tail, you want the one you're using as a tail. If you want to use it as a pair of limbs, then uh, you're, you know, you're going to be kind of repurposing them. But at least, uh, yes, uh, quite you could use them for four tails as well. Um, but uh, in any case, people would, uh, uh, you know, they would have other options. But um, you know, I'm I'm okay with the idea of adding kind of one additional. A set of joints there that we could uh, people could purpose you know they could use the two tails as a uh, as a second set of as an additional set of limbs if they wanted to or they could uh, they could use one as a tail and one as a control for the uh, you know scales on the back of the tail or you know whatever uh, whatever floats their boat I guess Uh, so let's see. I was just talking through the proposals a bit. Um, I I guess we probably are not going to try to add additional wing bones. That really didn't get a lot of traction uh, in the in the polling. And it sounds like most people think that they can they can work with what we have there. Um, you know, we it looks like we can take out two of the uh, Two of the wing roots, given that we're you know allowing the translations to be animated, um, so that at least saves us a little bit there. Um, there's a another part of the proposal was to add joints deep to the head, um, uh, sort of face roots, so that you've got a bunch of uh, joints that are that uh, you know have a common parent that can be moved together. I think kind of like an upper, mid, and lower face. Um, I don't really have a strong opinion about that one, um, and if the if the face joints actually wind up being kind of inside the head instead of on the surface of the face, uh, I don't know if there's as much of an incentive to do that or not. Um, so I'm I, I can see going either way on that. I'm curious if anybody else has any opinions on that. I'll I'll can everybody hear me? <laughs> uh, yep. Okay. I, I have a little bit of a cold, so forgive me. Uh, as I was looking at the face bones and um, like Tiger's problem with the neck and everything, uh, it just seemed uh, perfect to me to have that root. You know, you having a root bone for the wings just really helped me for the ears. And I just see this exact same thing for the face root bones. And that kind of solves Tiger's problem with the extra neck bone too. Yeah, I'm not sure how that flies with the extra neck bones. Um yeah, one thing I haven't talked about yet is the uh uh you know spine extensions trying to add additional neck or spine bones. Um you know currently we just can't do that because of uh an existing uh limitation in the viewer. Um and you know, given that we have to get the skeleton finalized kind of up front before a significant amount of time before we go to final release. Um, so, you know, third party viewers have time to incorporate the changes and so forth. Um, you know, my, my suspicion is that the timing isn't really going to work out to try to do uh, to try to do spine changes. Uh, for, for Well, that's kind of that's kind of my point, though, that if we just add a face root yeah, off yeah. of the head, then Tiger can use uh, the head bone as an extra neck bone, and that kind of solves her problem all all around. And that also yep. allows us to use that root bone to kind of parent it to anything too. So if we have an unusual face or something, we can just parent that root bone to the head, and now we're fine. Okay. Well, if that if it worked for that. Uh, that's fine too. The proposal I was talking about had suggested having actually three uh, kind of face roots rather than one, um, 
and uh, so I'm not sure if that would serve the same purpose or not. Um, there were kind of two proposals. There was one to split it into sort of three zones, and there was another to just have a single route that all of the all of the face joints got attached to. I, I do remember that proposal. Um, I'm not even sure what the purpose of having two more root bones would be, but um, you know, like I like we talked about before in the meetings, uh, you know, one root bone is good, uh, but I mean, you have translation. So if you need more, you just move those bones, you know? Yeah. Uh, my sense is it was really more of a kind of an organizational thing to make it easier to, to manage bones in groups. Um, you know, and I, I can imagine if you had a head that was significantly distorted from, uh, you know, from a human, it might, be convenient to be able to kind of move sort of blocks of, of joints at the same time. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure about that. And I don't have a, I don't have a strong opinion there. Well, um, you know, if there's not a strong advocacy for having three roots, we might just want to go with one. Um, let's see. So what else? The, uh, we talked about the spines, um, Uh, let's see, somebody's talking about the th three, three bones to make a gadget to animate the face quickly. Uh, could you, uh, uh, elucidate on that more? Okay, the face animation video near the end of the feedback thread. Um, so what was that? How was how, how are the three roots uh, being used in that case? Didn't that rely on also having um, constraints, um, bone motion constraints? Which we which we don't believe that we will have. Well, what uh, Gaia did, or um, the Machina Matrix team, they just added um, controls that are in Blender. Uh, it's nothing that they're adding to the skeleton necessarily. That yeah, that doesn't necessarily right. That doesn't how you having having aids to developing animations is not really what we're talking about here. The question is, what are the capabilities we want the skeleton itself to have? Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, the, certainly there's things that that people are probably going to want to put in their rigs in uh, in Blender or Maya or whatever that uh, that simplify the animation process, but that aren't actually part of the uh, the second life skeleton, and that we don't we don't use them, uh, you know, in the viewer. I don't think I've seen that. I haven't looked at the feedback thread in a little while, so I'll have to go back and look. Okay, well, uh, Ethereum, I'll take a look at the. Um, I'll take a look at that uh, at that animation. Uh, if we have any questions about that, who, who's a good person to contact? Should we just uh, drop Guy a line about it? Yeah, probably probably Guy or Matrice. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think that covers most of the proposals. I, I also, I'm fine with adding a couple of additional ear joints so we could do, you know, floppy or, or bendable ears. I think that's probably a reasonable thing to do. Um, to, to clarify, when I was talking about getting rid of the wing roots, I mean that we can get rid of two of the three. We would still have a single root that the wing bones, uh, you know, converged on that could be moved separately from the... Uh, uh, chest or whatever it is that they're that they're ultimately attached to, but um, it, that the the purpose of having three originally was really to get around the limitation of uh, of not being able to animate the translations uh, on joints, and so we uh, we shouldn't need more than one, I think, if if we if we are allowing that. Uh, the survey we put out also had a late breaking request for uh, additional breast, nipple, and hip uh, bones. And I'm not sure exactly what that's in reference to. If it's 
uh, if the intent is uh, primarily for attachment points or for uh, uh, or for for joints that are actually going to be used to animate the the model. Um, I, you know, trying to do anything with the breast would be very problematic because uh, we've got, you know, we've got this this physics stuff on the default avatar that that sort of doesn't track along with, you know, in a in a simple way with the with the joints themselves. Um, and uh, I think just having, a, you know, like a single joint bone to approximate breast movement in uh, uh, in a in a mesh avatar would probably pretty odd and I don't think it would probably be that useful um, so yeah I'm not really sure uh, what uh, what we can do with those um, you know we've got the limitations because of the avatar physics and uh, you know just the, the kind of physical complexity of trying to trying to model the, the anatomy there um, Let's see. Other than that, I guess we pretty much covered the uh, the request from the survey at the last meeting. Um, so I th think that I think that about covers it. Uh, does Does anybody else have uh, you know input related to or in addition to the uh, uh, the machine matrix proposal? Okay, well that's uh, that's kind of where I am on the on the bones right now. I think we've we've we're, you know we're pretty pretty much at the point where we you know it's it's precise enough that it could be uh, you know munged into a, a final proposal, which is probably not too different from what the uh, you know what the revised proposal that was uh, that was put forward in bug one 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 three two was. Um, uh, except for uh, the, you know, the points of difference I was just talking about. So anyway, we will try to, uh, uh, we'll try to get that uh, pushed on down the road as, as uh, expediently as possible. Um, so uh, I guess other than that, we've we've kind of got an open agenda. What uh, anything else uh, folks want to talk about this week? Oh, definitely. Um, um, why are we sort of touched on it a little bit um, um, about adding a second, well, adding, rigging the default avatar's head uh, to the new face bones. And last meeting that we had, I suggested having two heads available, uh, a legacy head, which is exactly the way it is now, and then a, uh, the same mesh, but rigged to the face bones so that Anybody who's using the standard avatar um, uh, mesh in Second Life would then have access to all those face bones um, as far as animations were concerned. And um, I know somebody brought up um, uh, that, you know, well, what about the Morse? You know, and I really thought about it and I tried to do some experiments and um, I realized that, that we could keep. Um, almost all of the morphs, except for the ones that deal specifically for, with the expressions uh, for the new head. Uh, and that, that would allow all the sliders to continue to work. Um, and then just let people say, if you're not using the legacy head, the animations that use those face expressions uh, won't work. Um, and I think most people would be happy with that. Um, and because I, I looked into it, I know like the avatar head dot LLM file um, has the mesh, but also I think it also has all the morphs. So if we just added a second head that just simply didn't have those face morphs in it, when it went to play those morphs in an animation, it simply wouldn't play them. Um, and, and then we should probably also extend that to the hands, have a second set of hands that are rigged to the new fingers. So that people who are using the default avatars could choose between a legacy hands that they have now or the new hands. 
I but think the trick, but the trick with both of those is how does my choice affect what you see? Right? If I think I'm using the let's let's use the fingers, right? If I think I'm using uh, that I'm using hands that have standard hands that have that are rigged to the fingers, then uh, the then what do you see, right? Right. How, and and if so, and and if you're going to see what I see, how do you know? How do you find out that that I've chosen to use the finger bones instead of the just the the primitive hand morphs that were that were in the that were in the default the version the version 1.0 avatar if you will right well the way i figure it is it's just like wearing any other mesh except for you know so you'd have an alpha that alphas out your original hands and that you wear these it would just be like wearing a pair of custom hands or custom heads so right that, well that's that's different that's different that's not providing an alternative that is the default avatar with slightly different rigging that's just using the that's you know we buy a, a we buy or create a set of hands and say you know this is how you put on mesh hands but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily um, yeah uh, the but the, the difference would be between wearing something right out of your inventory and wearing something with an option in the in, in the appearance editor is that right now, if we bought a custom mesh head, it doesn't have access to the morphs of the sliders. Um, right. So, so that's why I was saying if we had a second set, a second head that was rigged to the face bones where people would choose in the, in the appearance editor, then, then they would have access to the to the face morphs yeah. for the sliders and have the face be able to be animated with the bones. Um, and having two of them in the appearance editor would mean we wouldn't be breaking any pre-existing content, but at the same time allowing everybody who prefers the, the default avatar and being able to make their own face changes, you know, appearances, to have access to all the sliders. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a. Uh, I, I guess the way I put it is it's it's definitely not going to fit into the initial bento release. We've got, um, you know, there's there's limitations in the viewer. Um, you know, we really have two different kinds of meshes. There, the 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 type of mesh that we use for the default avatar is kind of coded one way. It can only handle 15 joints per. Uh, mesh, and then each each kind of region of the body is its own mesh. Um, you know, so so and and it, that's the representation that has morphs defined for it, right? Um, you know, then we've got the mesh. You know, the mesh objects that are more flexible that can be rigged to a lot of joints, but that uh, you know aren't compatible with the morphs and have a, a have a you know arbitrary topology. They're not. They don't even. They don't even sort of line up with the morphs vertex by vertex. Um, so, you know, either either extending the existing uh, default model so that it could handle more joints and, um, uh, you know, then then could play with the morphs would 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 be a, a big project. And coming up with some scheme to allow morphs to to play. Nicely with arbitrary meshes would uh, you know would would also be a a big thing. So you know I, I understand the desire to have these things integrated better, and I, I'm completely sympathetic to it. But uh, you know from a, from a scope standpoint, I I think it, it pretty much has to be after the uh, after the initial Mento release. That that having been said, it is something that we've talked about having people spend time on after the initial Bento release. But basically. What we're going to have to do is is figure out by just trying to do it whether or not we can make something, uh, whether or not we can modify the default mesh, the default avatar, um, to be rigged to at least the hand and face bones, uh, and, and we basically there wouldn't need to do any of the other additional bones. Um, 
add rigging to the hand and face bones for the default mesh itself uh, and without introducing anything that's too terribly backwards incompatible, right? I see. Right. Um, I, see. I it, wasn't aware. I Sorry, I was just going to say, I wasn't aware that there was this limitation that, uh, that, there, that the head, the default head, could only be rigged to 15 bones. So, yeah, that's definitely something that can't be done in this initial release. All right, well, so uh, what are they, the hands, right? I mean, they right, have more the than hands. that right in the hands yeah, themselves. They have the same problem there. Um, just uh, a few thoughts from me on this. Uh, I mean, I'm not even sure, like, uh, what Oz was talking about, uh, adding functionality with those with the default and the bones is really even the way to go. Um, and the reason why is because uh, there's a problem with the default and and uh, a mesh that we would make, so a, a, like a fitted mesh. Uh, the default uses its own system, and then fitted mesh has fitted mesh system. But um, now, Veers talked about adding collision bones for the face so we can kind of morph parts of the face. And if that does happen, then I would propose that Linden Lab uh, just releases a new avatar, the same avatar, same mesh and everything, but fitted mesh with all the, you know, weights for all the fitted mesh stuff and all the collision bones, because that would turn the default into an avatar that works with fitted mesh. So somebody makes something that's fitted mesh, a, cl a clothing item, it'll actually morph properly with the default, uh, uh, the new default, basically, because they're both using fitted mesh now, and it just works better. Yes and no. As far as, as the clothing, it depends on how it's weighted. Um, the different mesh avatars, custom avatars that we have now, all use different weights. And so mesh clothing that will work with one fitted mesh avatar won't necessarily work with another. Um, um, that's true, uh, mesh but avatar. that's true. But at the same time, they all have their own weights. I'm saying that if Linden Lab puts out their own with their own weights and everybody builds off that, then we have a system where that could actually work versus what we have today. Right. I agree. With, I, I understand what you're saying. If that sort of became the standard and if it was done really, really well where the, the avatar's body changes um, shape when you when you move the avatar, when you move the sliders, uh, a fitted mesh avatar. But yeah, if it was done really well, that would could become the standard that other avatars in the future start using that weight. And then, yeah, I agree with you. I have a question unrelated to that. Is the voice, the location of a voice star related to the skeleton? In uh, our discussion uh, about that last meeting, uh, I think we wound up concluding that it was probably tied to the physics rep, which is related the I, to the I, I pelvis asked, location. Yeah, because, you know, watching with you talk, the Location of the voice dot is kind of unfortunate. And if we're <laughs> yeah, going to support yeah, we about that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, well, there's a yes. metaphor that comes to mind, but I'm going to pass over that one. Uh, um, uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's uh, appreciated. Um, yeah, but I, if, if that's, that if that's true, a, it's, a, it's a viewer issue. Yeah. And, and, and should be pretty straightforward to fix. Is, is actually kind of reasonable. So, uh, it, you know, it would probably be possible to change the logic so that the voice dot you know, wound up being, you know, kind of positioned with uh, the same logic as the, yeah. as the, the name labels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Elizabeth had said something in the, in the local chat, or she typed something that I had missed. Um, um, uh, uh, I would say suggest uh, answering one of Elizabeth's questions was that if we do, if Linden Lab did end up having a fitted mesh default avatar, that they would actually need to have two avatars, one a legacy avatar just as is now, and the second one being the fitted mesh avatar, if Linden Lab decided to go that way. 
at all, where people, just as they choose gender now in the appearance editor, they would choose the legacy versus the new fitted match default editor. If not, the library was even going to go that way. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the unwearable default might have also been related to the question of whether you could have uh, mesh avatars that were using the using your bake texture and you wouldn't want to display the default avatar at the same time. Um, I know we've talked about that before. Yeah, uh, you know, that's on our our list of, uh, uh, you know, potential post-Bento projects. And I think it's one of the, personally, I think it's one of the ones that has a, you know, a nice, uh, you know, nice uh, balance between the, you know, kind of feasibility and, and how much, how much it would benefit people to, to get it done. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll be able to consider that uh, at some point, but, uh, you know, obviously it's ultimately not my call and uh, it's, it's definitely not going to be going out with the initial Bento release because we've already got uh, quite a bit of stuff to get through there and we don't, we, you know, we, we can't have it uh, hanging on in a DD forever. Custom bones is a is is you know also something that, that uh, there's there's some interest in, but it's a, it's a harder problem, and uh, so that's uh, you know have to allocate more resources to be able to pull it off, basically. Yep, yep, objects and NPCs. All right, was there anything else in uh, chat that we missed? Uh, question of the sliders for making the basic face. Yeah, so it's, you know, we don't really have a scheme right now that would allow all of the sliders to work with, with mesh avatars. Um, you know, the Bento gives you more bones, it gives you more control, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really give you a, a complete replacement for our existing, uh, you know, for our existing scheme. And uh, so I think, uh, you know, I think there's, there's definitely still some, some, you know, compatibility uh, issues there that we don't have any, uh, you know, kind of immediate solution for. Some of the sliders, uh, yeah, I believe we already do have some of the sliders. I think like if you change your avatar height, the wings also get longer, that sort of thing. Um, you know, if uh, if there's time to add a bit more on that uh, before we release, uh, that would be great. If, um, but I, I can't tell you exactly how far we're going to be able to go with that at this point. Yeah, some of the sliders do work with the um, uh, with the new bones. I, I wrote the code for making the face bigger as you make your head bigger, and uh, and so yeah, we're doing some experiments, Trace and I. Yeah, uh, you know, once we have the final set of bones uh, defined, then you know we have a stationary target for for uh, you know for for people to add uh, additional slider content to. Um, so if uh, you know if we do have some bandwidth or uh, uh, if Kathy has some time to look at it, then um, you know we we may be able to to flesh that out a bit more. Right, and Ethereum said, yeah, the hands. Matrice did the the codes for the hands, so that when you make your hands bigger or smaller, the bones in the hands get bigger or smaller accordingly. And he also did the wings, so that when you switch between male and female, the wings, I think they get a little bit bigger, but they also move back farther on the back since the male avatar has bigger, bigger back. So we're, we're getting some experience in that area, but we don't know how far we'll be able to push it. Yeah, so the hope is we can go a bit farther than we have now, but uh, it's certainly not going to support all of the, uh, you know, all of the existing sliders or, or have kind of seamless inter interoperability between the mesh and the default app.
Okay. Uh, any other questions or things we should chat about? Okay. Chat about? Uh, there were two things that I was hoping to hit on today. Um, one of them was brought up from the last meeting that we had about, you know, having a standardization of you know, uh, the avatar or the bones. And I really thought about it and I really realized after a little bit of thinking that um, we do have right now a standard avatar, which is the female default avatar, and that the, um, the avatar skeleton XML file is based on that female avatar, the, the, the mesh and the bones, the bone positions are all based on that avatar. And so as far as the face bones and the hand bones and everything, I think we should just continue to base it off of that avatar um, so that uh, so that we're just consistent. That uh, it seems reasonable. I, you know, we will have to, uh, you know, have to kind of go through the exercise of, of trying to extend that to at least the male case, uh, presumably as well. Although I don't know, given the size of the relative markets, maybe nobody cares that much. Right, and that's something as far as um, uh, it can be handled in the, the avatar lads when switching between male and female, uh, the bone. The face bone positions could probably be handled in, in there. So if, if the face bones are going to be slightly different for a male because they have bigger faces, that could be handled in the avatar lab. Yeah, I don't think that uh, that uh, modifying avatar lab is particularly uh, straightforward or graceful, but it, it does give you quite a lot of control if uh, you know if we can kind of dive in and and uh, muck with it but that's uh, for anybody who hasn't uh, had the uh, good fortune of working with that file it's a it's a giant xml file which includes the definitions of what all of the sliders uh, do so defining uh, you know that if you modify a particular parameter then you have uh, uh, you know this the specified effect on uh, however many bones downstream that sort of thing uh, along with a lot of other stuff Right, right. Oh, and just to let everybody know that, that right now the avatar skeleton file, because um, uh, Matrice and I have spoken about this quite a bit since we, you know, Matrice does, um, he's with Gaia and does the uh, Avastar, and I'm working with Mayastar, and we're trying to figure out, you know, the easiest way to rig to the face and this and that. And so the avatar skeleton file, the endpoints of the bones, um, you know, if you if you open up the avatar skeleton file and you see that we have these endpoints, those endpoints do end at the surface of the skin of the bones, uh, you know, of the avatar mesh head. And um, as we know that it's it's easier to rig to do a, a basic rigging weighting I mean, and the initial weighting if the bones are at the surface of the face. And so. Matrice is playing with an idea of temporarily switching the bone positions as you do, as you, as you rig to the face, you know, do your initial weightings, and then having the bones then automatically flip back to their original positions, so then you can go ahead and animate them and translate them, uh, either by rotation or translation. Um, so, so we did take that into account. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Um, so that doesn't affect the contents of the skeleton file in the viewer. It's it's just a kind of a, a trick that's used as you know for modeling purposes. Right, right. It's sort of a, a double in benefit. Blender, uh... Right in Blender, you you do have to um, specify the end point position of a bone, um, and so we we did the endpoints to make it uh, easier for Blender be able to set up the, the bone structure in Blender. Um, and then Matrice realized, you know, hey, these should be at the surface of the skin so that so that he can use it for, like I said, being able to make it easier to do an initial weighting of the face. And then I was all for it because um, with Maya for BVH files to export out, you have to have these little end bones, um, effector bones to be able to export the BVH file. And so, um, 
So I was like, oh, that's great. Put them right there. And then so, but I'm also going to probably do something the same, similar of making it so that it makes it easier to do your initial weighting uh, or rigging to the face. So yeah, they, it's working pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to bring up um, was something that Aura said. Um, this has to do with an issue that Medu had brought up about the legs, the front legs crossing on a quad pad uh, when he turns. Aura, I was chatting with her in, in the Slack channel, and she was thinking that it might have something to do with the .anim files when they upload, that .anim files don't have an ease in and ease out, um, so that that might be why um, the, the, the legs are getting crossed. Um, um, uh, yeah, in Anim basically, um, it, it basically has all of the contents that you would get from a BVH plus all of the settings that you would have in the BVH upload dialog, uh, all sort of munged into a single uh, data structure. So it, it certainly should be possible in principle to get the same contents into an Anim. Now, whether whether there's an issue with particular ones that are being uploaded. You know, without that information, that's that. Uh, I guess that's possible. I don't know. Right now, now I'm giving you this information secondhand, so I'm not sure if I'm relaying it correctly. She may have been uh, saying stuff that that I'm either not reporting or that I maybe have misunderstood what she was saying. So yeah, give Aura a a, 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 a chat with her a little bit and ask her because uh, she'll okay. probably be able to clarify it a lot. Because um, she definitely seemed to have an had an idea of why it was crossing, and it seemed to be something different than what we had talked about here. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, there seem to be a, a few different uh, competing uh, theories on that. I haven't uh, haven't really done any testing with it myself, so I'm not uh, I, I'm not at all sure what the the underlying problem is. Right. And I and I guess Aura also told me that um, she's getting close to being able to get. See, BBH files um, are somewhat limited in that you can't do translations other than the M pelvis bone, or the hip bone. But that Aura said she started to work on getting uh, to allow BBH files to be able to get translations for all the bones as well, which yeah. would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, she's been working on that this week. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to have that in the next, uh, you know, in the next project viewer build for Bento when, whenever that goes out. I'll I'll just say because a, a couple people asked um, if you weren't here um, at the last meeting or whatever um, yes we did go over the arms crossing and we did figure out that um, using overriding uh, the um, AO animations properly using the um, set override call um, re really does fix the crossing over so as far as I've seen Okay, so there was a particular animation that didn't have an override defined, and, and it was the fact that you were transitioning into that that was causing the problem? I think it's more a timing thing. The, if, you're, if you're using the, if you're rewriting the server's animation table, which is what set override does, then set animation override does, then you get the right sequence of animations. And if you if what you're doing is monitoring what's going on and trying to get to to do overrides of the indiv animations individually, uh, you end up with a little time gap during which one of the system anima animations begins to play. And that's what the leg crossing is. Um, right. So it's, it's so a timing thing. Whereas if you've if you've rewritten the animation table, the timing all works. And right, and, and I think there, is. I think there is uh, something going on too, where either the last animation just gets totally lost because of that second or whatever, and it's it's not blending from the old animation anymore, and that's where you get those legs crossing over. Because now, right. it's well, if it had begun to play a system animation in between, you wouldn't expect it to, to exactly, so, exactly, right. So that that's true too. In my investigation, I was looking at the Zao, the kind of default. Well, a lot of people use the Zao animation overrider, and that does not use the LL set animation override command at all. 
um, which is a a newer command. And so I think that works better on the system level. And maybe somebody needs to write a, a an updated AO um, that's using that command. It probably works better. Yeah, I, I would hope that uh, you know now that that set animation override is uh, is an option that's available, that would kind of trickle into the uh, into the generally used. Uh, I think. There, but I'm I not think sure the. the looks like. I think that the. Uh, I think that the the increase in interest in animations and and so forth uh, that this project is going to that I predict this project will cause is probably going to be the trigger for that. Because the the set animation override has been around for quite a while now. Uh, yeah, it's been around for a while now at this point, but I think it's still the new kid on the block is, compared to a lot of the... Yeah, the wiki says 2013, but I think Zao was written in, like, 2007. I think that's what the date I saw in the script. If not older, yeah. And even even the ZHA02 doesn't uh, override it properly either. So yeah, legacy content is an issue. But that's encouraging if we actually do understand what's causing the problem, and it's not. Uh, you know, if there's a known workaround, it's not affecting everybody. I will have to, at some point, get an AO written, so um really depends on my code or whether I can release it um, for free to everybody, but we'll see. I would suspect that as people start having bento-based avatars, that is going to create a considerable incentive to update, since the you know existing AOs animations aren't going to you know animate any of those joints. Personally, I'm if I want everything to work right, I'm going to have to update almost all my AOs really. Yeah, I guess the updates kind of have to sell themselves. If people can see, oh, hey, you know, your avatar does this thing that mine doesn't, then, you know, what do I have to do to get that? But, uh, yeah, we'll see. It is, it is hard to dislodge something that's kind of well established, especially if it's also free. Does anybody know if Firestorm's internal AO works correctly? I don't. I have a little bit.
Yes, my understanding my understanding is that Firestorm's AO basically uses the ZHAO, but I haven't looked into it, so Yeah, I think it looks like you've been working on the wing animations a bit. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> and just stretching my wing. Uh, yeah, I did it specific specifically for um, Braxy's uh, Bento video that he did, or that we all did. Yeah, that's cool. to sell them. Yeah, I don't want the uncertainty about the skeleton to be an obstacle to uh, uh, further progress. Uh, you know, the, the hope is that, uh, you know, having an open discussion on that would encourage people to create test content to demonstrate different skeletons, but it also increases uncertainty and it's probably scaring some folks off. So we'll uh, we'll try to remove that blocker as soon as we can. All right, anything else? Okay, well, thanks everybody. We'll uh, in, uh, chat again, should be next week. Awesome. See everybody next week. Well...